Working in archaeology or paleontology must be an exciting and rewarding profession. There's always something new to discover, and in the process of making discoveries, you find out more about the world as it used to be. That knowledge allows historians to see the past in a new light and can totally change the way we think about the past. The past few years have been especially busy for those in the digging and discovering trade, and here are just a few of their most exciting finds. The most important archaeological discoveries are those that have the potential to completely change our understanding of history. That description can be applied to two teeth that were found in the southwest of Germany in October 2017. They are ape teeth, and they challenge our understanding of human history and evolution. That's because they're 9.7 million years old. The teeth are a canine and an upper molar and they closely resemble those found in the remains of the great apes that roamed Africa between 2 and 5 million years ago. The obvious difference being the fact that they are so much older. Those African apes are thought to be very early relatives of the first humans, and so their appearance in Germany runs contrary to the well-established idea that human life began in Africa. The find is so anomalous that some paleontologists are reluctant to confirm that they're definitely of hominoid origin, but there are more experts who do than experts who don't. Did human life come from Europe rather than Africa? More evidence would be needed to confirm that idea, but it's certainly a possibility. What really happened to the English settlers who disappeared from Roanoke Island in the late 16th century? It's been the topic of many a piece of fiction and even a horror movie or two, but as of February 2020, we might be inching closer to a definitive answer thanks to ongoing archaeological work at two different sites in North Carolina, USA. The colony's disappearance was documented by settler John White, who set sail for England to collect supplies in 1587 and found no trace of his former home, friends, or family when he returned in 1590. They were never seen again. The new evidence suggests that, for reasons unknown, the colonists moved further inland and assimilated into two Native American communities, one on Hatteras Island and another around 50 miles northwest of the site of Roanoke. A gold signet ring and the hilt of a light 16th century sword have been found at the latter site, while a copper ingot and iron bar have been found on Hatteras Island, both of which are thought to be of European origin. None of this tells us why the colonists moved, but it might finally tell us where they went. Trying to locate the tomb of Alexander the Great in Egypt has been a lifetime obsession for generations of archaeologists, but Calliope Limnaeus Papacosta might be closer to finding it than anybody else ever has been. After 14 years of looking, the Greek archaeologist found a magnificent early Hellenistic statue in Shalalot Gardens, Alexandria in 2012. The statue is thought to be a likeness of Alexander himself. She took that as a signal to keep digging, and by 2019, she and her team had uncovered Alexandria's ancient royal quarters, 35 feet below the surface of the city that exists there today. The foundations of Alexandria have finally been found. The former emperor and pharaoh was originally buried in the city of Memphis, but was subsequently moved to the city that bears its name. That was a bad move. The city was struck by a tsunami 2,300 years ago, and the waterlogged foundations of the city sank at a rate of a quarter of a centimeter a year. That might not sound like much, but by the time Alexander arrived, it had already sunk more than 12 feet, and it carried on sinking. New buildings were built atop the old ones, and everything below them was lost and forgotten. The tomb is down there somewhere, and it surely can't be far from the newly exposed royal quarter. Right now, paleontologists in North Dakota, USA, are excavating what's been described as a graveyard of prehistoric creatures and dinosaurs, who are presumed to be victims of the asteroid that struck the Earth millions of years ago and killed their species. The majority of creatures at the site appeared to have died together around 66 million years ago. The most remarkable discovery made at the site so far is the remains of a megalodon 100 feet long, with an estimated weight of 35 tons. According to paleontologist Ernst Simbiewski, this megalodon is exceptionally well-preserved and may not have been a victim of the asteroid collision. 
He says the bones look almost as if they've been processed in an abrasive blast chamber. That would obviously be impossible. Such technology didn't exist back then. And even if it did, dinosaurs wouldn't have been capable of operating it. One explanation might be that the creature had been eaten whole and was coated in the stomach lining of a larger creature. That begs the question of what kind of dinosaur would be big enough to eat a megalodon? Because Adolf Hitler was such a monster, one of the vilest human beings who ever lived, it's hard to imagine him enjoying a quiet, pleasant hobby like gardening. Nevertheless, it seems he did. A team of archaeologists spent the end of 2019 digging out his former Wolf Slayer headquarters in Poland, and they found the remains of his vegetable garden. Hitler spent much of the final year or two of the war at the Wolf's Lair, but was forced to abandon it in January 1945 as Soviet forces advanced on his position. The garden is less than 3,000 feet from the Nazi dictator's bunker and contains greenhouses, a gardener's house, and a boiler room that ensured conditions were warm enough to continue growing Hitler's preferred vegetables all year round. Hitler was a strict vegetarian, so having a vegetable garden close to his accommodation makes sense. But it was also part of his strategy to avoid the risk of poisoning by maintaining full control over the origin of his meals. The discovery comes two years after Hitler's painted red desk telephone was unearthed at the site. It went on to sell at auction for almost a quarter of a million dollars. Archaeologists made our next discovery in Saxony-Anhalt, Germany in September 2020 and they're still not quite sure what to make of it. They're confident that it's an ancient Germanic tomb, and the people inside it were laid to rest about 1,500 years ago. What they're struggling with are the circumstances of the burial. They think it might be evidence of an ancient cult or sect. The skeletons of six women are arranged in a circular formation around a cauldron in the middle of the tomb, which is believed to contain the cremated remains of a tribal leader or lord. Elsewhere in the tomb are the bones of sacrificed animals and a vast quantity of gold. The tomb has been described as having an almost decadent atmosphere. The identity of the tomb's owner is unknown, but nothing like it has ever been found before in Germany. Experts might never even have found this one had it not been broken open by accident during the construction of a new chicken farm in the area. Were the women wives or servants of the person in the bronze cauldron? Were they alive when the tomb was sealed? We might never know. Saber-toothed tigers have been extinct for a long time now, but they're often cited as examples of how powerful prehistoric creatures were. As of June 2019, we know that they were even more powerful than we'd always thought. Experts have been studying the skulls of saber-toothed tigers taken from two different locations in Argentina in an attempt to determine how the animals died and they reached a surprising conclusion. They were killed by other saber-toothed tigers, and their killers struck them down with a single bite to the head. Having completed their studies, the experts now feel confident enough to say that the beasts were capable of puncturing the skull of another big cat with just one bite, thanks to the exceptional strength of their canine teeth. In both cases, the skulls have a single puncture mark almost directly between the eyes, into which the teeth of another of their species fit perfectly. Saber-toothed tigers spent the majority of their time hunting and fighting mammoths and other large creatures, but they'd get into fights with each other about things like territory or breeding partners. It seems those fights would have been ended swiftly and with devastating consequences for the loser. If you follow the theory of evolution to its logical conclusion, all animals must have had one common ancestor. In March 2020, scientists announced that they think they might have identified that creature. And it's not a pretty one. It's a 555 million year old primeval worm with a clearly defined head, tail, and symmetrical sides. A crude way of looking at humans is that they're little more than a digestive tract wrapped in meat. These worms could be described the same way. It would be more accurate, though, to describe it as a bilaterian, and its fossil was found inside a chunk of rock extracted from deep below the ground in Australia. The fossil is no larger than a grain of rice, 
and couldn't be seen or studied clearly until it was processed with a 3D laser scanner. It's now been named Icaria wariudia and cited as the oldest known bilaterian ever discovered. They lived during the Ediacaran era, which is when the first multicellular life forms appeared on Earth. Most creatures of this era perished in a prehistoric mass extinction event, but this one appears to have clung on for at least 100 million years, possibly paving the way for all future animal life in the process. Being female didn't preclude anyone from becoming a warrior in ancient Siberia, and nor did being a teenager. Archaeologists first discovered the remains of a mummified Amazon warrior in the Tuva Republic in 1988, but at that time, they could only identify her as being female. It wasn't until June 2020 that it became possible to put an age to the Amazon warrior, and experts were shocked to find that she was only 13 years old. Despite her youthfulness, she must have been a respected warrior. She went to her grave with an axe, a bow, and a range of arrows made from bone, wood, and bronze. She was dressed up in a double-breasted fur coat before she was laid to rest in a wooden coffin. Although the mummification process wasn't perfect, her body was well-preserved enough for a large wart on her face to remain clearly visible even after 2,600 years in her grave. This Amazonian warrior girl is the prime piece of evidence for the existence of a female warrior tribe living among the Scythian people of the Central Asian region in ancient times. When you were a child, you might have stored any coins given to you by adults in a piggy bank. If you have children, you might even have given them a piggy bank of their own. This is an ancient tradition, and it goes back at least 1,200 years. The ancient equivalent of a piggy bank was found in Israel in January 2020, where archaeologists found a collection of gold coins stashed inside a clay vessel for safekeeping. The discovery was made in what's being described as an ancient industrial area, where experts believe a trade center existed for several centuries. The coins were all minted in the late 8th and early 9th centuries, providing archaeologists some historical context for the find. Although the clay vessel they were found inside wasn't shaped like a pig, it had a slot and a seal to prevent coins from falling out or being accessed easily, so it would have served the same purpose. Given the value of the coins inside it, though, it's perhaps more likely that the artifact belonged to an adult than a child. Unless we're talking about a very rich child. Nuisok's castle in Poland was built for the country's royal family in the 14th century. But in June 1941, it was seized by Nazi invaders and turned into a barracks. Ever since the end of the war, it's been assumed that nothing was kept here other than soldiers and munitions. But a June 2020 archaeological dig has changed that opinion. A Second World War era treasure chest has been found at the site, and within the chest, a set of more than 100 fine silver objects. That might not be a strange discovery to make it a royal castle, but these silver pieces aren't from the royal collection. The majority of them are household objects like cutlery or goblets and appear to be of Jewish design. The current theory is that the Nazis stole them from Jewish people living in the area around the castle and then buried them in the chest for safekeeping. The castle was attacked and blown up by Polish forces in 1945, so the Nazis never got the chance to come back and reclaim their ill-gotten gains. It's possible that other stolen goods were kept in or around the castle's grounds, and so archaeological digs at the site continue. We know that our ancient ancestors worshipped many different creatures as gods thousands of years ago. Does that mean this snake altar, which was discovered in Patara, Turkey in October 2020, is evidence of an ancient society of snake worshippers? Probably not, but the story behind it is still interesting. Patara is an ancient Greco-Lycian city with a history that goes back thousands of years. The so-called Snake Altar is roughly 2,000 years old. It was found in an area not far from some recently discovered Roman baths and is covered in Greek inscriptions. It's the first altar of its kind to be found in Patara, but resembles another altar that was found some time ago in Mugla. While some people are afraid of snakes, the people who made this altar were probably familiar with the local species, which were friendly and harmless. 
Experts believe it was probably an agricultural totem, upon which pieces of bread and meats would be left as offerings to the gods. Snake symbols are often associated with agriculture in ancient Greek and Roman mythology, but the reasons why aren't yet fully understood. That's a mystery for the archaeologists of the future to solve. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!